ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا رب العالمين we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we praise Him Azza wa Jal for His blessings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us His pleasure in His worthy life and hereafter. Allahumma ameen ya rabbal alameen. We come back to our weekly, every Friday, the explanation of Riyad al-Saliheen, this beautiful book of the Imam Manawi, rahmatullahi alayhi, the Garden of the Virtues. And we reach the chapter number 25, the chapter of the taking care of the aman or the trust. And as it is the norm for the uh, Imam Anwarullah, he starts the chapter with the ayat and then he continues, follows up with the hadith. And the first ayah he mentioned there, as we uh, gave an, a brief explanation last time, and we're going to continue, inshallah, tonight, was the ayah, Inna Allah ya'murukum an tu'addu al-amanati ila ahliha. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you to fulfill the trust or to render back the trust to the owners of them. And we explained the mafum or the explanation or the meaning of amana. And amana trust has a very broad understanding and meaning, which it has to deal or is deals with every aspect of our life. And in here, it is in general, the amana or trust Somebody can leave some and, and, and trust with you some deposits, money, or anything to protect or to safeguard it. Or can be many examples. We're going to go over, inshallah, ta'ala tonight and, and other uh, nights, inshallah, bin Allah, next week and us, because it's a very broad concept and that it deals with all of us in this worldly life. All the amanat and all the trust. If you are a teacher, for example, you your, your students and your job is an amana in your hands you have to take care of the of the students and then to give them the knowledge that allah has given to you and to deliver the message and that what you're spreading for example the imam or somebody who has another job he has to take care of his his work you are a doctor you are a, a nurse practitioner you are an engineer whatever you have in your hands you have the amana to deliver that for what allah Azzawajal has brought you uh, another example, I mentioned if, if a woman, a sister gets, she takes, she takes from her, another woman, another a sister, the jewelry to use it, has to, to give it back. Another thing which a lot of people, they don't deliver or they have a lot of problems in, in the society is what? When you take loans, you get a loan from a brother to help you. And that is a manna on your neck to pay it back. And what happens many of the times, what happens that the person who actually it's his own, his own money, he gave it to help that brother. And then when the time to get it back, he becomes a beggar to get that money. And sometimes he cannot get his own money. And this is haram, the Jews. It's not allowed to not pay back the, the debt or the loan that somebody is. The person disappears. No answer or calls. This is what happened. Or maybe he says to his, you go to his house, it, he says to his kids, daddy is traveling. He's not in the house. Lies. And he said, it for, happened for that. SubhanAllah, when the person come, came to get that loan, he considered himself, maybe he was in need. He was in need. He came and uh, very good uh, behavior with then please give me that or that he be that even hundred dollars or thousand dollars or whatever he came and now as they say they say a beautiful word they say the arabs they say uh oh and yeah, he became like the red sulfur red sulfur you know it's a very rare gemstone or a very 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 meaning that the person disappears you cannot find that the person anymore yeah no, nowhere. Why? Because he cannot deliver that amana that he took, that money that he took from the people. And many of these things, especially for the, the loans, many of that happen, first of all, because we have weak iman, people who don't deliver the amana. 
And second, because we don't apply the Sunnah of the Prophet in the laws. What is the Sunnah of the Prophet? So Sunnah of the Quran first. You have to, to write it down. It's not, most of the scholars say it's not a wajib obligation, meaning they do, if you don't do it, it's haram. No, it's highly recommended for these things to not happen. Write it down. Number one, write it down. To make it stronger, be to have two witnesses. You write it down, two witnesses in there, and at least have to, to face these two witnesses. If to make it a little bit more stronger, uh, you can have like mortgage on halal. We put something like like uh, for a, something, a, a trust on a, a car or whatever, right? It's in there for in, 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 your, in your name. It's in your name and put for that. So all of this, but especially the writing and the two witnesses. These things are, are not ha happening. So, okay. Oh, no. For example, if, if the person gives, okay. Was that a loan? I thought you gave it to me for free. You just gave it to helping me. You have nothing in writing, nothing else. Subhanallah, this is uh, haram. How you, you did that? You took the, the money of the brother without any haq and any right. From the amanat, that a lot of people, they cheat on them. And a lot of people, they betray the aman and trust. Is your wife. Yani, your wife, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you, you want to, to, to get married. And the... The greatest of the shurut and the conditions are to, to be fulfilled are those, the, the shurut, the conditions that you wrote for the marriage. The person goes to get married in there and said, ask the family, okay, what is your conditions? Do you have any conditions for me? Yeah, for example, the sister wants to go to school, wants to, to go to the university and, and study to become a teacher, let's say, for example. Do you accept? Say, oh, no problem. Okay, maybe she's working. Then I, I have a condition on you that if I get married to you, I'm going to work. I want to work. This is my condition. It's up to you, accept it or not. You accept it. Okay. Or, for example, I put a condition, she puts a condition that I'm going to, I don't want to leave my city. Or I'm not going to go like uh, outside my country. I, I, this is my condition. You accept it, accept it. Or, for example, if you marry two wives, I don't want to stay in the same house. I want a house for myself. Or, or I don't want to stay. Or I have, want to have the, the, uh, to live with, uh, with you in another house. Not with a family, for example. Any conditions that she put. You agreed. خلاص. You agreed. It's a condition. What happens? You say yes, yes, yes. It's because you want to get uh, married to that, that uh, lady, that, that sister. And then after the marriage, she said, no. It doesn't work with me. I want you to stay home. No problem with that. But it was before, not now. I wanted to stay home, take care of my kids. Then there is no problem there in the beginning. But now you agree to those conditions. And this is betrayal of the conditions of the amana. Why did you not, did you put you in a condition? I don't, I can't do that. There is plenty of uh, other sisters. And I, I, you agree to this? Then my condition is that you, I don't want you to work. That's it. You agree to, I agree. But now that you agree, say, no, 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 no. It doesn't. Uh, I want you to stay home, or uh, it doesn't work with me. I, I don't feel good. Okay. Or if you say that, brother, haram. How are we saying this to the, the sister? Say no. I didn't say that not to work, but I said I don't feel good if you if you work. So it's better to stay home. See, see how that they think that this is a betrayal. You should have said it from the very beginning. This is my condition. You accept it. I accept. Okay. These are conditions. I don't accept it. That's it. There are uh, there are plenty of other chances. So, but as long as you accept the conditions, and these are the conditions of the Prophet ﷺ, we said, Indeed, you took these, the, the women that as their wife, with the aman, the trust of Allah Azza wa Jal, and it was made halal for you, that with the kalimat Allah, by, by the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you gave the mahr, and you said, I, I accept this uh, lady to be my, my wife from the wali in the garden. So let, let, that's this brother's fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because now, when the women, they get married, she becomes poor or helpless. Especially after having, uh, like after the marriage, maybe she becomes pregnant. She becomes more weak and poorless. Especially if then 
um, after the, if, if she gets divorced, the number of the people or the category of the people that would look to get married to her would be less. Maybe somebody old, and so she doesn't want to get divorced, and she she bears the suffering through that marriage is going through just for the sake of not just breaking the family. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. And we have a lot of cases like that, subhanAllah. Why? Because the person becomes zalim and he doesn't uh, give the haq and the right to her and he doesn't, accept, doesn't uh, uh, fulfill the aman and the trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has put in, in his neck. Same thing for the jobs. What happens? A person says that you're going to come and work for me. Okay. What is the the pay is like this. What is the work you're going to do? You're gonna, I'm going to do this, 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 and that. Okay. After you agree and you make the contract and everything, the guy, he just rejects everything. He said, why? Well, I, you, you agree. No, but this and this, that. You agree to that. That you have to, to fulfill the amana, then the trust, and the, the, the work that you agreed for. That is that you are betraying the trust and you, you agree. And this happens many times, many times. It happens even from the brothers who are religious and at least apparently religious. But Islam is not in Islam, it's not only a religion that which is like apparently from outside, but it's the deen with the morals and characters and manners that you have to actualize what your iman is. You have to put the amana and the trust in the hands of the owners. Another example, amana, nasiha, giving advice. A Muslim brother, he's asking you for advice. Give the best advice that as far as you know. Especially brothers, for example, are in a business. A brother comes to forget, well, which, which phone should I buy? Which, well, which product should I buy? It's a, this one, would you give him advice? And the guy, instead of, you know, like, this is the best, for example, he said that he... He wants to, to sell something and say, oh, this is the best for us. And he wants to, because he wants to sell that, that product. That be phone or anything. Else. Just he wants to sell that product. And he didn't give the best advice. You betrayed the trust. He trusted you. He is asking your best nasiha advice. Every Muslim. Another example. A person knows that, alhamdulillah, you know a lot of people. Bukhara, Masakeen. And he gives you money to, to give them to uh, these fuqara and masakin and poor, and poor from the zakah, from sadaqat. And what happens? You say, okay, you know, he gave me, let's say, $1,000 distributed. Say, 5% or 10%, I'm going to keep it for myself. Why? Because I am from the amilin alayha. I am from the category of zakah, those who, workers of zakah. That's Allah mentioned in the Quran, one of the eight categories. No, you are not. You are not from Amirin Aliha. You are not considered from the workers of Zakat. And he gave it to, to distribute it, to distribute it to those people that are poor and needy. Distribute it. What has happened? The shaitan enters, you know, my brother is poor. So I give. Without asking the person. If you want to do it the right way, you ask the person. You know, really, if your brother is a poor and he deserves to get from the Zakat, say, you gave me this money? But there is like, I know other people, but uh, among them, it's my brother and he is really in need. In need. Like he's, uh, is a can you, do you allow me to give a portion of that? Net? If he allows, no problem. But if not, no, because you become molder or shubha. You, and you, you are benefiting in an indirect way. And that's because you give to the brother. He didn't tell him, the brother will say, mashallah, thank you, your brother. And I think even you benefited. That's not your money. It's somebody else's money. Somebody else that he, he entrusted you with that. So we have to send to these people or some other people, for example, get money from the people and to give to the poor and needy. And then they betray those people who got the money. A lot of they, they, this happened anywhere in Muslim countries too. What happened? How he betrayed them? Yeah, he gave the money to give to the poor and needy. And the guy said, well, who you give to? I gave this student. He had a loan. Okay, and the, the guy who got the money, he is a dealer. He sells cars. So I said, the guy, he owns me money. So I, the money, I'm taking it because he owns, he owes me money. So in, instead, he, he got the money instead of distribute to the poor. And he, because maybe he has a debt, but he has a debt to himself. So you benefit for your own self. That's why you got the money from the people. You understand the, the, the point? You should not. 
do that. And we just uh, people, they do whatever. Some others, they say, for example, okay, somebody gave you money. He knows that you're a good businessman. So, okay, take this money. If you can, please invest it. Alhamdulillah, and we get uh, something. We share the, the profit on that. The easiest way to lose your money is this way, especially nowadays. Unless, illa marahimullah, and somebody that you really trust. In. And Muslim countries, this happens a lot. And the sheikhs that will listen, at, uh, that subhanAllah say that really, they have stories that they tell this way. Especially if the person, subhanAllah, sometimes he takes money, maybe from his family members. He doesn't have, okay, the person that, khalas, because the person who gets the money, <coughs> he may he may be thinking that this money, mashallah, and it's 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 gathered, to, it's easy, you know, a dollar green from the the street, and it, it's it's easy. He, he, he didn't work for this money, so when he gets his money, no, I mean, he's not trustworthy. He gets his money, it's easy, it came into his hand. So whatever, maybe he, he uh, combined and he, he gathered, collected this from his family member, or maybe he is entrusted with this money from the poor and needy and, or the widows and 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 when he wants to invest so he can get more money for them to for to keep to give them a sadaqat you know how the the, the person collected this money and take the guy he just takes the money okay i need to go to china now he takes the, the airplane and he, he uh, beautiful hotels and everything in there this is the first trip he gave hundred thousand dollars for example uh, khalas, the first trip just only stick shaft, just only like uh, looking and checking the, the prices of the items and everything, $50,000 gone. And then he comes back, no, I have to, then the uh, the merchandise comes in the, in the port and stays there and every day. Now, he doesn't care because it's, it's not his money. And you have a lot of stories that have happened here, it happened like that. A lot of stories that happen like that, subhanAllah, and the money just loses and the person doesn't have an amana. A person gave you money, all like to give to fuqa, to the for Ramadan to uh, feed the people who fast in Ramadan. You gave the money, alhamdulillah. You fed the people. Money left. It's not allowed for you. Okay, let me give some other category or some some other thing. Let, let me print some books, Islamic books. Is it a good thing to print Islamic books? It is a good thing. But the guy who gave the money he gave it what for? Iftar sa'im, yani to, to the, the people, to, to feed the people in Ramadan. So it's not allowed for you unless you ask him, you go, I spend this money, is left this much, what do you want me to do with it? And it should, there is other things, if you want, I can, but for this reason, I don't have any money. You can take it back or I can spend. He gives you, uh, he allows you to, to spend it in, in that, uh, for that purpose, alhamdulillah. Or you can give it to other masjid the same purpose, for example. Alhamdulillah, you, you, you fed the people in your masjid. There are other masjid they made it on hands for, for that purpose. So the amana is so a broad concept that applies in every day uh, and every, uh, every day of, uh, of, our, of our life and every aspect of our life. A person who is a mean and is entrusted to take care of an orphan. Allah Azawajal says, Wallahu mufsida min al -muslih. Allah knows the one who spreads mischief and the one who spreads good. Do not eat the money that Allah Azawajal has put you that you are in charge as a guardian of an orphan, for example. Do not eat and spend this money, their money, that is often extra by extravagance excessively and hastily, quickly, quietly, or, or uh, quickly to spend the money. So before he gets old, huh? just خلاص, uh, he had this money. I want to spend it before he gets old because he's going to spend. So let's say, for example, I said, mashallah, I have money for I'm taking care of, of, of this young man that he's orphan, he's yatim, and let's go. We're going to go eat. Go eat the best, most expensive restaurant. If he's uh, like an old, he's like a grown up and everything, you would not go in that restaurant because you know how much money is it. Let's go. No, no, it's a beautiful restaurant. Uh, best expensive, but the most expensive restaurant is nice. We go here, go there, just spend the money and he grows up and the money 
is gone. Uh, that's is betraying and cheating and getting the or uh, not giving fulfilling the amana of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We stop here inshallah wa ta'ala. Ask Allah azza wa jal to grant us understanding of our religion. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, grant us pleasure in dunya and hereafter. We're going to continue inshallah wa ta'ala uh, next week with uh, other examples of amana. May Allah azza wa jal make us of those who fulfill their trust and an amana that Allah azza wa jal has entrusted them with. Allahumma amin ya rabbal alameen. اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه صلى الله على نبينا محمد وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك